Value risk, what is it? It measures the worst expected loss over a given horizon under a normal market conditions at a given level of confidence. Right, so what does that actually mean in practice? It, it's an estimation of within a certain level of confidence, a statistical term, a certain degree of confidence as to how much maximum you will lose over a specified time period. That could be one day, one month, one year. Okay, so under all these assumptions, you won't lose more than that number X, okay, under all those assumptions, right? So, for example, a firm might claim that the daily VAR of its trading portfolio is a million dollars with a 99% degree of confidence. That means that at 1% of the time, the daily loss will exceed 1 million. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? You know, it could be 1 million, it could be 1 billion, it could be 1. 99% of the time, only 1% of all the days you consider Will we lose more than a million? And we made 100 million PL last year. Fantastic. No, no problems. Unfortunately for you, that 1% of the time, the loss couldn't, may, will, may exceed 1 million, but it may exceed it by a lot. You could lose a billion on that day. Okay? So it's important to understand what value risk is telling you and what it isn't telling you. Okay? It's just a measurement tool, it's just an estimation tool like any other. Okay? And it's not, you know, precision. It's an estimation, okay? In simpler words, VAR is a single number that, in, that indicates how much a financial institution can lose with probability, and you can put any Greek letter in there you want. You can just put the letter P if you want, as opposed to the theta, um, over a given time horizon. Why is it so popular? Why does the regulator require, and by the way, in, every, in lots of jurisdictions, not just the UK, why does the regulator require you to use it? I would suggest originally because it reduces the risk associated with any portfolio to one number. It's accessible. It's optically transparent. It's not practically transparent because there's so many assumptions behind it, but it's optically transparent. For this portfolio, your VAR is one million. Great. I'm happy. I can go to sleep. I can relax at night knowing that the VAR is a million. Okay. That's why I think it's so popular. Why does the regulator require you to use that methodology compared to any other? Like I said, you're, you can surmise. Why don't you tell me? Okay, I'm happy to take any, any answers on that. But I think it's because it's, it's accessible. It reduces to one, one number, one absolute number, your exposure, your balance sheet exposure. And you get a VAR for, for, for credit risk, you get a VAR for market risk, and you get a, a VAR for non-traded market risk, okay, interest rate risk in the banking book. VAR methodologies, right. Non-parametric, okay? Historical simulation. That's, in other words, you don't have defined parameters for it. You take historical actual returns on a portfolio, okay? So this is what the portfolio made, p &L, over the last one, three, four, five years. And then I run a simulation of that with a volatility parameter, okay? So I base actual historical data to create forward-looking simulations, okay? Requires historical data doesn't make assumptions about the return distribution. It's unlike the last one, which we'll look at. Monte Carlo, you model a simulation based on a volatility parameter of where today's number might go. If you, lo if you look up, if you just type into Google, and this is something you can do at work, no problem. There's no stigma looking this up at work. So go into a search browser at work and type in Bank of England quarterly bulletin inflation report, okay? And you'll see a lot of these fan charts. They run a simulation and there is a greater degree of likelihood in the middle of the chart. So inflation in the next 12 months could range from 1% to 3%, but the middle of the fan chart will be in the 2%, okay? Now, what is that? That's a kind of simulation, okay? They may even use a Monte Carlo method, okay? It's basically taking a number, putting volatility parameters, and then seeing where you could go. So that's one VAR. And then the other one, the most common one, the original one, uh, variance, covariance, you assume a normal distribution or a log normal distribution for returns of a portfolio. So that's why it's really best suited to a trading book where you mark to market every day. That's why, again, I'm not a big fan of VAR and a banking book, but it is what it is. So let's just live with it. But in a trading book environment where I mark to market every day and I assume a log normal distribution, then with that assumption, I can have an idea and based on a volatility number and a correlation, I can have an idea what the value at risk is. 